Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Alter Quest from Blacklist Games. And there's sort of a disclaimer needed for this one. I did get my own copy of the game from the Kickstarter, not a review copy, but at the same time, and this is something I've shared before in my Dire Alliance review, uh, Peter from the channel and I are pitching designs to Blacklist, hoping to get published with them. Alter Quest was my number one anticipated Kickstarter at the end of 20. 2019. But this is a full year later, the world looks a lot different, and I kind of feel a bit different as a gamer, so how did it hold up for me? Let's find out and get to the list. So for my number five, I'm going to start off with a con, and that is how big and sometimes fiddly the game can be. And to clarify what I mean, first of all, you have this giant board for the game. And I do want to say I like the board itself and the fact that I don't have to put tiles together. I don't wish that the game had tiles instead of this. And it's fun to kind of figure out like which rooms you go to and chart your path through a quest. But the board is just huge, takes up a lot of real estate. And then add on top of that, you have so many decks of cards, just all these decks. And many of them have two or three or four cards in play with different effects effects you have to resolve each round, the sheer size and kind of scope of everything still can make it feel really overwhelming for the player. But I'm up to a pro for my number four, one that I always mention in these Blacklist MDS games, and that is the dice system. I love this dice system. It has uh, so much mitigation, almost nothing is a quote-unquote bad result, because even when you miss, you get tokens that'll help you hit the next time. And really, one of the key things I like about this dice system is that everything is player-focused. The enemies don't roll for attack, instead they have a value, and you roll to cancel some of that damage. And I just love this as a general rule for any of these kind of games. I think it's more fun in co-op and solo when you're rolling for yourself and uh, the AI is kind of more something you react to. I have another pro at number three, and that is the sheer variety of play options available here. And this is kind of the calling card of this series, the modular deck series, because you have all this modularity with mixing and matching things. But the key thing I want to focus on here are the quests and the modes of play. So while the quest design itself is not consistently wonderful, there's sometimes some wonky balance issues or some wonky like rules you got to make a judgment call on. The variety of the quests, with some of them having a boss fight at the end, some of them being a chase, some of them being a search or a hunt. That's really great on its own, especially when you start mixing and matching the villains and the heroes and their special powers. But then add on the other modes. You have this big campaign mode with this really like well-written fun choose-your-own-adventure style of play. So a lot of cool ways to interact with this system and get into the mechanics. I really enjoy the choices there. But I'm back to a con for my number two, the biggest one I have about the game, and that's how repetitive it can feel. The fact is that in the game, you're going from room to room, opening these doors, and these threats will spawn. But the balance of the game feels a little bit off with these threats spawning once you've built up a decent amount of resources. Because a lot of time through clever tactical play, you can bust into the room and take out every enemy in there without them even having a chance to react to you or do anything interesting. You lose the kind of uniqueness and challenge of the game, and it begins to feel very samey. Now, I will say, if you watch a uh, Colin and Barrett's playthrough that is up the same day as this review, you'll see their variant, and I've seen other ones on Board Game Geek, to increase the difficulty. And I think this can have a fairly transformative effect on the game. Because once you get that challenge back in there, and rooms are tough, and monsters survive for a couple of rounds, and kind of force you to race a bit more to still complete your quest, then I think it can really decrease this repetitive feel and make the game consistent consistently exciting. But I am going to end on a pro for my number one. It was my favorite thing back when I reviewed the game in the summer of 2019 for the Kickstarter, and it's still my favorite thing now. I think the tactical play here and the combos are great. So you've got these cards you can play, you've got actions you can take, and those are interesting in and of themselves, especially in that a lot of them will help your neighbors and help other players. And all these effects interact with the altar dice pool, and I love this mechanic. It's a lot like uh, Mage Knight, for example where you have these symbols and you can use them to boost your card effects, but then you have to re-roll them. And sometimes you'll roll something that will help the enemy out unless you can find a way to get that die rolled again and change that. 
Overall, I think Alter Quest is going to appeal to fans of the modular deck system series, especially Street Masters, because you have kind of similar tactical combat here. I think it's going to really appeal to dungeon crawler fans, especially if you don't want to always do a 30 or 40 mission campaign. If you just want to kind of sit down and play a single game, this will definitely fit the bill. And anyone who really enjoys kind of intricate tactical combos and card play, especially in cooperative play, will have a lot to enjoy here. But on the other hand, if you don't want to deal with a huge table hog, with something that's kind of hard to organize, with a fiddly bits and a lot of cards and effects all going on at the same time, and if you're not willing to play with some variants to increase the difficulty a little bit and kind of uh, get rid of some of that repetitiveness that can be in the system when you clear out enemies too easily, this one might not be a hit for you. And we've played this one a lot on the channel, tons of videos you can check out, but if you want to see the most recent one, one, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.